It is that time of the month again, time for another Top 10 Zages video. These are my favorite videos to do. I have a Top 10 list and then a Honorable Mention list. A few of these characters in the Top 10, like two of them, I include both their Zetas in them. So technically you could say Top 12, but who's counting? These are in no particular order. They're based on where you're at in the game. These are what I find are the most important Zetas. If you have a different opinion, let me know in the comment section below. We're going to start with the top 10, and first we have R2-D2 and both of his Zetas. He had fallen out for a while, he's definitely come back into play with Chewbacca coming out. It is amazing to put these in the light side lineups, this guy, because they're so unbelievable. Right here, I'm just going to read the Zeta part. Well, R2-D2 is active, whenever a light side ally scores a critical hit, dispel all debuffs on them. This is what I call a soft cleanse. You're going to be running a lot of teams that crit, especially when you run with a CLS team in Arena with Han, Chewie, R2, L3, etc. You're going to be keeping buffs off or debuffs off you most of the time. In the Sith Raid Phase 1, this is amazing because you're going to be running a JTR team and you want to keep debuffs off you to be able to decrease your cooldowns more quickly. And this is just an amazing ability, ability and it's going to be good for years to come in my opinion because it works with all light side allies next we're going to look at number crunch <clears throat> at the start of battle and when r2d2 is revived other droid galactic republic rebel and resistance allies gain 10 percent of r2d2's max protection offense max health and potency and until r2d2 is defeated i've made videos before on how to mod r2 right now i have him with pure offense as much offense as can be because i want him spreading that offense <clears throat> excuse me to the rest of my characters in the arena and in the raid i want more offense so that is why he's just a great character next in the top 10 we are going to look at cls all of his zetas are good but the most important one in my opinion is it binds all things because it works as a leadership ability without him having to be in the leadership spot Whenever Luke resists a detrimental effect, he recovers 5% protection, and whenever Luke inflicts a debuff, he gains 10% turn meter, and other allies gain that half that amount. So he's able to give turn meter to other allies when he inflicts a debuff. 5%. That's awesome. He can be inflicting debuffs. Make sure to put a little potency on him. Um, and actually, if you have that paired with Rebel Maneuvers, whenever an enemy resists a detrimental effect, Rebel allies gain 5% turn meter, you could be getting a lot of turn meter against the Bastila team. I'm not including that Zeta. The most important Zeta for him is it binds all things. Next on the list, we are going to look at Raid Han. He had fallen out for a while. He was still in the honorable mention for the longest time because he can just deal damage. He is back in the top 10 because of Chewbacca being released and his shoots first ability. Plus 10% critical chance in the first time each turn han uses his basic attack he attacks again dealing 50 percent less damage attacking twice dealing more damage chewbacca assisting when chewbacca has guard this is just an unbelievable ability and it can absolutely tear through teams on offense that is why i love him he's definitely part of the top 10 next is darth scion and his unique ability lord of pain it states that at the end of each turn scion inflicts pain for three turns on enemies who uh, who, da who, he who damaged him that turn. So if somebody hits uh, Scion while he's taunting, they're going to be given pain. He's going to be able to get held by Hatred that much quicker. It's a great ability, and he's still very viable with Darth Trey and the Arena. They're probably still the best team in Arena, even though I like to think that CLS and Chewbacca and Han can climb up there as well. Next, we are going to look at Darth Treya. As you can see, I've started to get shards for her. That's amazing and both of her abilities she's another character that has both of these abilities her leadership ability when an enemy uses an ability outside of their turn they take damage equal to 35 percent of their max health this damage can't de defeat enemies when an enemy gains a buff outside of their turn they lose 50 percent offense until the end of their next turn let me tell you with having a chewbacca team where he assists raid han or cls or both of them this still man this can take them down a lot of damage this can damage them a lot and it's still one of the greatest abilities in the game she is you know kind of a counter to them but they can take her out as well think of all the teams that assist taking 35 or damage equal to 35 percent of max health this is this is a very op ability and it's going to be fun to use when i get it and lord of betrayal next it states that 
At the start of each Sith ally's turn, Treya dispels all debuffs on them and deals damage equal to 5% of their max health for each debuff dispelled. Another passive cleanse. This is amazing. Anytime you can get rid of debuffs without really happening to do anything, it's definitely a game changer. Again, both of our abilities are up there as well. Next, we're going to look at BB-8. BB-8. Roll with the punches, and I'm going to pair two of these characters together because they're most important. Roll with the punches states, when BB-8 attacks out of turn, he calls a random resistance ally to assist, which again would say that Treya would just dominate you. But with BB-8, we have to look at JTR. Jedi Training Ray, where are you, my dear? I've lost Ray. I've lost Ray. Oh, there she is right there. Jedi Training Ray, and it's her leadership ability, Inspirational Presence. She has three Zetas. I find the most important one, Inspirational Presence. Let me tell you, if you know how to use her in the Sith Raid, I made a video on dominating with JTR in phase one of the Sith Raid. She can, she can deal 10% damage if you do it correctly. And it states when a Resistance ally uses a special ability, all exposed enemies lose 5% turn meter, which can't be evaded or resisted. When a resistance ally uses a special ability, if they aren't debuffed, reduce their cooldowns by one. So, if you get an expose on Nihilus and keep using special abilities on the ads, he's not going to be getting turn meter. You're going to get Illuminated Destiny off before he even has a chance to go. If they're not debuffed, you're going to keep decreasing their cooldowns. So, you're going to be able to get big hits with uh, Scavenger Ray and resistance trooper this is still used in arena in certain areas she is a great character and this is definitely something to zeta if you plan on doing well in the game next we're going to look at bastila bastila is great she might get better with the character i'm going to mention later in her leadership ability initiative this helps in arena you can find that these teams in the top of arena it helps in the raids uh p2 is great as well in the sith raid and it states Add one turn taunt on Jedi tank allies at the start of encounter. Add plus 150% tenacity with protection up. They're going to be resisting debuffs all the time. And that is, I mean, when you can't give a debuff to the other team, think about that. It's, it's a game changer. You're free to do whatever you want, and she's a great leader, and she's only going to get better, in my opinion. Next, we're going to look at the newer character or newest character in the game. Some of you may have him, some of you may not. He's viable at a lot of star levels. It's Chewbacca and his loyal friend, Unique. The reason he's in there, even though not everybody will have him, is because the people that do have him can dominate with him. In the Zetas part of it states, when Chewbacca deals damage to an enemy, Chewbacca and all guarded allies recover 3% health and 3% of protection. This helps counter Treya's leadership ability somewhat. He's dealing damage. Him, Han, and CLS, or whoever has other guard on him, will be recovering health and protection. It's amazing with when you're not facing Treya teams. When you're facing Treya teams, it helps a lot. This is definitely a Zeta I would recommend. And last but not least, on the top 10 list is Grand Master Yoda. He is great in Bastila teams, and it's his Zeta ability, Battle Meditation. It states that you gain Foresight for two turns, plus 50% turn meter gain chance, and an additional plus 10% turn meter for each other living Jedi ally. This spreads all buffs that, that Yoda has to all the allies. Now you're going to be spreading Foresight, potentially gain some turn meter, and an additional 10% turn meter for other living Jedi allies for himself. This, Bastila teams would not work well without him. Not only with his rework can he do massive amounts of damage, spreading these buffs, and then with Bastila's ability to prevent them from being basically, they can be uh, cleansed or they can, you know, they can dispel, but they're not going to get any uh, negative status effects because of her ability and spreading these. This is just amazing. He rounds off the top 10. Now we're going to look at the honor mention, and some of these are very, very tough. There's a few I didn't include. I know you guys are going to be on me about, but that's okay. I had to I had to cut off the line somewhere. I didn't want to do a top 10 honorable mention. And we're going to start with Emperor Palpatine. He was in the top 10 for the longest time. And for those of you that don't have Treya, his leadership ability is still the best leadership ability for Sith in the game for use of the, those of you that run them. And it's Emperor of the Galactic Empire. And it states, when a debuff on an enemy expires, Empire and Sith allies gain 5% turn meter. You know, when you're facing General Kenobi teams and he cleanses or Chiro or Rex or whatever, 
and they cleanse or teams that you know passive cleanse like if you're facing an r2 team they're going to be gaining turn meter the more turn meter you get the more times you go the more damage you can deal still a good ability for those of you that don't have treya um and definitely one you should consider if you're looking at running sith in the arena next we're going to look at general veers the reason i have him on here no, you're not going to use him in Arena or certain aspects of the game, but he can single-handedly get you more stars in Territory Battle. And if you like running Imperial Troopers, they're decent in some of the raids as well. His aggressive tactician leadership ability is definitely something you should look at. It states, recover 10% protection whenever an enemy is defeated, plus 20% offense up chance, and plus 60% turn meter gain chance. This character is probably the one people will say that, you know, you don't have to have on here anymore, but I find him so useful. Like I said, uh... In the dark side territory battles, if you don't have him Zetas, it's going to be rough. And he helps you there and Imperial Trooper lineups, like I said. So I put him in the honorable mention because he's kind of like a dark side version of the next character we're going to go over, which is Finn. Again, a character that could be taken off the list because he's been this way in the leadership uh, spot with his Zeta for many, many months. And it's his balance, ta balance tactics leadership ability. Whenever a resistance ally loses foresight, they... Gain advantage for two turns, and whenever an enemy takes damage from Exposed, reduce the cooldowns of all resistance allies by one and grant the 35% turn meter. Similar to Jedi Training Rays, but a little different. You want to use him with Resistance Trooper and Poe. The reason he's still on here, because if you're early game and you want to be able to complete those, you know, regular campaign missions or the light side missions, you would like to have him Zated because you can go through some of those battles without the other team attacking. He is also great for light side territory battles because you can have your resistance at gear 8. The other team could be at gear 12 and you could get through the whole battle without the other team attacking. That's definitely why he's still on this list. He's viable for early game players and in some instances late game players as well. Next, we're going to look at Asajj Ventress and it's both of her abilities. Night Sister Swiftness, Leadership Ability and Rampage. Uh, unique ability. We're going to look at Rampage first. The reason she's on here is because she can dominate raids. She can dominate in the Heroic Tank raid and in the Sith raid as well. And if you run Night Sisters in Arena, which some people do, she's great there as well. Her Rampage data states that she gets plus 75% turn meter gain chance, plus 5% offense, plus 5% critical chance, and when an ally or enemy is defeated, Asajj gains 5% max health until the end of the encounter. This ability lets her stack critical dance, uh, critical chance and offense up the whole the whole match. So when you have this data on here, it boosts it up even more. So you can imagine if you start with her in phase one of the tank raid and keep her till phase four, her her uh, AOE hit is going to be just knocking everybody out in one hit. It's amazing. It's still a great ability. And her leadership ability is best used in P4 of the Sith raid. Even with the Night Sister Zombie rework, it still can solo Nihilus in, Nihilus in that part of the raid. And it states plus 25% turn meter reduction chance, plus 10% turn meter reduction. Night Sisters gain 50% turn meter when they fall below 100% health. You're going to be healing in that team. They're going to be getting to 100% health. Then they're going to be losing that health. They're going to be gaining turn meter. You have the chance to reduce turn meter from the other team. It's She is a Nihilus killer in the part of the raid some people use Talzin in p1 or p3 Asajj is definitely the way to go and the reason she's on the honorable mention list is because of that she you could say that you could argue her for top 10 but again she's not as useful in arena so i didn't put her in there but she's definitely on the honorable mention list next we have bosk now here's the reason i put bosk on here do you play with bounty hunters in arena no do you play with them in territory battles Yes. Do you play with them in certain events? Yes. And this is the main reason. And they're also viable in the raids. The reason I have his leadership ability is aided in on here is because Chewbacca is an awesome character. And in order to get Chewbacca, the easiest way to get him at any star level is to use the Bosque leadership ability. In my opinion, many people have used Boba Fett's leadership, different leaderships. I think the easiest way if you get your bounty hunters to gear 12 is to use his leadership ability because you get so much more protection so much for more health they can take a lot of hits it states whenever an enemy suffers a debuff or resists all bounty hunter ally bounty hunter allies recover five percent health and protection you're able to recover health you're able to recover protection survive all those hits from lando han chewy r2 um leia organa it's just it's a great ability and the main reason i'm telling you to say that 
is because of the Chewy event. You want to get Chewy at five, six, or even seven stars, and I would use him as a leadership. I find that the most effective way. Again, some people don't. I'm just stating you the way I put it. And last but not least on the honorable mention is Emphis Nest her fighting instinct. The reason she's on here is because if you get her at three stars, she's still viable. Even in the top of my arena shard, there's a few emphasis nest at three, four, and five stars, even though I have her at seven stars. And it's her fighting instinct unique. It says, add taunt ignore at 2% health steal when enemy loses buff or debuff. So she's going to be stealing health, which will be stacking, which is huge. Um, she's great in the Sith raid in P3 with bounty hunters. You use her as the tank. And you're able to ignore taunts, which means you can stun somebody that doesn't have taunt. You're able to give days to people with one of her abilities. And when you do hit somebody with taunt, she dispels the taunt. This is definitely a great Zeta ability and one you should consider getting and using on Emphis Nest at any level. That is the list. I'm going to say, I know that some of you are thinking I should have Thrawn Ebb and Flow, which is still a great ability, but it's not used as much anymore because it was used really it was worked really well in the tank raid but people are able to complete that much easier i know some of you are saying why in the world don't you have kylo ren unmasked i don't use first order as much for those of you that do his leadership ability is great and i know some of you are also going to be saying why in the world didn't i include darth nihilus because he's part of the triumvirate well his ability you know can give health down to somebody but it's just not completely necessary to make the team work so there you have the top 10 in the few honorable mention list for october it has changed i hope it changes again next month i like the diversity now for those of you that have gotten to the end of the video here there is something i need to tell you that's extremely important revan is being released obviously you guys have seen the hype i did a video with mobile gamer god bless him for allowing me to be on the channel and explain a bunch of things to him we don't know how Revan is going to come out yet. We don't know if he's going to come out via a heroic event, maybe a raid. I sure hope not. Or some other way. It's Jedi Revan, by the way. For those of you that are collecting Zetas, please, for all that is good and holy in this world, be saving your Zetas. Unless you need to absolutely put it on somebody in the top 10 list that I mentioned, please be saving them to put on Revan. He could be coming out at any moment. He's most likely going to have three abilities that need to be Zetaed. They might be amazing abilities. So save your Zetas until that time. If you need to put a, a Zeta on JTR to do well in the Sith raid, go for it. That's important. But for those of you that are sitting on Zetas thinking, who should I Zeta next because I have a few extra, save them, please, for Revan. Jedi Revan. I almost said Darth Revan. It's not him. It's Jedi Revan. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash the subscribe button, like the video as well. Click the notification bell so you're alerted to every single video and con much content that I post. And leave comments in the description below or in the link below, please, because I comment section below. Sorry about that. I want to know, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are there characters that should be on here that I don't have on there? Again, this is my opinion based on the importance of the game. It is by no means gospel. Um, so let me know what you think, if I'm right, if I'm wrong, and let me know what other videos you would like to see. I know a lot of you want some more how to mod videos, and I'm going to do that, and I can't wait for Revan. You can guarantee I'll be making a video about him at some point in time as well. Otherwise, peace out, and may the Force be with you.